My name is uh, Graham Williams. I work at Imperial College London and I've been working for the last 25 years, I guess, on thyroid hormone action and the last 15 years on the effects of thyroid hormones in the skeleton. We're particularly interested in bone diseases because um, they're major factors in uh, disability to the population and they have a huge impact on the economy as well. So osteoporotic fractures uh, result in huge morbidity and even mortality and affect a, a vast amount of the aging population. So it's an important subject. And we've been working on trying to identify the molecular mechanisms of thyroid hormones in the skeleton. And during development, the thyroid hormones have important effects on um, bone formation, on mineralization, and on linear growth. And they're absolutely essential. Just the right amount of thyroid hormone at the right time is essential for the acquisition of peak bone mass at the end of the growth period in the early 20s. And then in ad adulthood, thyroid hormones are important regulators of um, mineral homeostasis and the mass of the skeleton. And they have an important role in um, fracture risk and the maintenance of bone strength. So too much thyroid hormone, even at the upper end of the reference range in uh, euthyroid individuals, is associated with an increased risk of fracture in prospective studies, uh, whereas too little thyroid hormone has also been shown to be uh, associated with an increased risk of fracture, but this probably relates to periods of overtreatment so that too much thyroid hormone stimulates bone loss. And whilst we've been trying to figure out the molecular mechanisms of this, so far we've identified that the main target cells of thyroid hormones are chondrocytes, which form cartilage during growth, and osteoblasts, which lay down bone um, during the growth period and also during growth repair in adulthood. The one thing that is a conundrum at the moment is that um, the effects of thyroid hormones seem to regulate uh, bone resorption or the rate of bone loss, which is mediated by cells called osteoclasts. But at the moment, we don't know whether the effects of thyroid hormones are direct in osteoclasts or whether they're mediated by actions in other cell types. And it's only now in the last few years or so that we've acquired all of the tools necessary to address these important questions. And in the coming years, we should be able to identify how thyroid hormones act in individual cell types in the skeleton. We should be able to understand the genes that are switched on and the signaling pathways, and hopefully new molecules that can be used for intervention of these devastating diseases. So it's an exciting area for thyroid hormone action in the skeleton. Thank you.